The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The mission of the devil in humanity is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the reason Apostle Peter warned believers to be sober and vigilant before the devil as our arch enemy is going about seeking whom to devour. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Anyone who is not watchful enough will fall prey to the devil. However, there are certain signs that prove that the enemy is winning in an individual's life. As we consider those signs, you will do well to weigh yourself on the balances and return to God before it's too late. 1. Pride. Humility will take you a long, long, long way with God. We are to humble ourselves. The Bible instructs us to humble ourselves. James chapter 4 verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Notice the Bible instructs us to humble ourselves before the Lord. Instead of you constantly rebelling against God and walking with your chest up high in your sovereignty, bow down to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead of you walking in this false sense of self-accomplishment at your achievements and accolades, bow down to the ancients of days. Instead of looking at your life, looking at the house you live in, looking at the money you have, looking at the wonderful family you have, bow down to God that lives. Humility before God will take you a long way. James chapter 4 verse 6, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. God usually resists the proud by himself, but he elevates the humble. When the devil rebelled in heaven, he was cast down to the earth. Pride is traceable to the devil. Anyone that is proud, belongs to the devil. God will resist such just the same way he resisted the devil. The devil plants pride in people's hearts. He makes them to usurp the glory due to God. He knows that God resists the proud. Once he sees that you are progressing and doing well in the Lord, he begins to make you proud so that God can resist you. The Bible says that pride goes before destruction and haughty spirit before a fall. If you have pride, you are taking after the devil and that means he is winning you over to himself already. Pride is evil. It corrupts your very nature. It distorts you. Pride will push you to put yourself at the center of your life and not God. Pride exalts you to the point of God. If you are not praying to God lately, there is pride in you because prayerlessness is pride. Because prayerlessness points to the notion of self-sufficiency, self-dependence, and that is pride. We need God. We need to pray and humble ourselves before the Lord. One simple way to humble yourself is to pray. Because prayer really reveals how desperately we need God. And desperate need of God is humility. 2. Compromising to do evil. Exodus chapter 23 verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Another way to know the enemy is winning in your life is if you find yourself compromising your faith. We live in a lawless society where sin is celebrated. If you are beginning to join the world in immorality or you are beginning to become unfaithful in your place of work like others, then the devil is winning you. Regardless of where you find yourself, you must be able to stand for the Lord. Joseph stood for the Lord in Potiphar's house. He refused to compromise to do evil. What do you do when other believers are not around you? Do you join others to plan evil when you are the only believer around? Do you take the lawlessness in our society as an excuse for your sins? Are you compromising with your faith? If your answer is yes to any of these questions, the enemy is winning you. God demands you to be bold. God demands your light to shine. Your workplace needs to know you are a child of God and you don't get involved in such antics. Holiness. Holiness. Right living requires you to stand up and even look strange at times. 3. Telling lies. 
John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. The devil is a liar from the beginning. And Jesus told us that he is the father of lies. Anyone that lies belongs to the devil. The devil has won such people to himself, they now speak the same language. You see, many people think that lying is a small sin, but it is one of the most abominable sins before God. God hates a lying tongue. Just imagine this little sin that we see as a little tiny sin that does not do any harm. God literally describes himself as hating this sin. In fact, the book of Revelations point out that all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, which will outline all the people who spend eternity in the lake of fire. I want you to take note of all the other sins that are grouped along with lying. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. All liars. I know we don't see lying as a big deal, but God does. He takes it very seriously. I know some of us have gotten to the point that we lie and we don't even feel guilty. That's how often we lie. That's not right. You belong to God. You are a child of God. Act like, behave like it, and live in truth. You must learn to walk in truth in order to please God. John chapter 4 verse 24 tells us that true worshipers must worship God in spirit and in truth. 4. Becoming unyielding to correction. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Have you found a person who will never listen to correction, but always proves to be right at all times? It is impossible to live with a person like this. Guys, I'm not perfect. You are not perfect. You will not always be right just like I will not always be right. It's okay. You are human. Have you found a person who will never listen to correction but always proves to be right at all times? Such people are being won by the enemy. Remember that the devil's mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If he successfully makes anyone to rebuff correction, he has successfully prepared such an individual for destruction. Samuel told Saul that stubbornness is equivalent to iniquity and idolatry. That is how worse being adamant to correction is. There are people who think they have outgrown the Word of God. They don't listen to passages that correct their errors. They think that all they do is right. No one can tell them anything. Even when the Word of God speaks against their actions, they still choose to harden their hearts. The Word of God says that such people will suddenly perish without remedy. Never be unyielding to correction from the Word of God, the ministers of God, or your spouse. People who have such habit prove they are being won by the devil. This goes back to that issue of humility. A person who can't listen or be corrected, even when they are wrong, has a serious problem with pride. I love my wife. When I am behaving like this, she calls me up on it in a respectful manner. But that is a woman of God, a woman who knows that you are sinning and can call you out on it in a respectful manner. 5. Yielding to Temptation 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12-13 through 13. Wherefore, let him thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Temptation is not a sin in itself, but yielding to it is a sin. If you see yourself giving in more and more to temptation, know that there is a problem with your relationship with the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. If you have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, all of the fruits of the Spirit will be evident in your life. And this wonderful fruit of the Spirit called self-control will enable you to overcome temptation. The moment you begin to yield to temptation, it is a signal that the devil has successfully allured you. Temptation usually comes with pleasure. 
Such pleasure is only a bait to get us trapped in the unseen troubles behind the temptation. The Bible warns us to take heed so that we will not fall. Every temptation that people face is not something they cannot escape. God will not allow the devil to tempt us beyond our abilities, and God has given us the Holy Spirit to enable us to overcome temptation. If anyone yields to temptation, it is his or her choice to do so, and it proves that the devil has won and will continue to win, except when such individual repents and cries to God for help. The devil can defeat people if they are not careful enough. He knows how to allure them until they get stuck in the shame of sin. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.